have you ever been rounding up a horde of zombies, getting ready to blast them away with your recently acquired thunder gun, and stop to think about how it really works? Come on, I bet you did for just a little bit. I know I did, but not really. I just thought of this out of the blue in the shower like, I wonder what it would be like to shoot a thunder gun, cause that's the kind of thing I think about in my free time. Thanks dopamine, getting me addicted to video games and crap. At least it's kept me away from this thing. And with Sledgehammer's vision for zombies coming in just a few short months, the palpable anticipation for the game permeating the interwebs indicates there is no more felicitous of an occasion to talk about the awesome and unexpected science of Call of Duty Zombies. I've decided to split this into two videos because there's just so much to talk about. Onward with the science. The Thunder Gun isn't your typical gun. It's what's known as a wonder weapon, which is code for this gun is super awesome. Every wonder weapon is powered with element 115. Element 115, at least in game, comes from the Apothecons, which long ago were protectors of the universe. When they made contact with the Dark Aether, however, some of them became corrupted, and after a war and some other stuff happened, they ended up sending Element 115 into the zombie timeline. And that is where it all began. Yep, seriously. All that is canon for what started as a simple bonus game mode in a World War II game. Element 115 is the reason for the zombies, the teleporters, the wonder weapons, and all the other outlandish stuff from the zombies mode. So what is Element 115? First, let's go over what it is in-game. And then we could talk about what it is in real life, since yes, there is an actual Element 115. But no, they don't unfortunately behave the same way, sorry to disappoint. Element 115 in game is generally found fluorescing either brownish, red, green, or even sometimes blue. Consistency much, Triarch? In meteors, usually. But of course this inconsistency can be waved off as just being caused by various dimensions making them different colors. So whatever. It makes weird noises and has electric pulses on its surface. It can even be liquidized, and apparently it makes people crazy Ring of Power or Reaper indoctrination style. So whoever designed these explosives must have gotten a whiff of it because they picked a pretty bad planting code. Now the real Element 115 has recently been named Moscovium, but for you public school kids you'll probably be taught its Ununpentium for another 10 years or so. It was first made in 2003 by a team of Russians and Americans. Yes, it's so heavy that none of it is naturally occurring, except maybe very temporarily in exploding stars, so we have to make it ourselves. But if you've been watching the news lately, you won't have heard of any recent zombie outbreaks. That could be because us COD players are doing our jobs. We don't need no Brad Pitt. Or it could be because the real Element 115 is quite possibly one of the most useless materials ever. I think a tasty root beer float is more likely to cause the zombie apocalypse. Its half-life varies depending on the isotope, but the shortest is 40 milliseconds and the longest is 800 milliseconds. Which means that if you somehow had 1 kilogram of Moscovium 290, which is the 0.8 second one, well it would be impossible since we've only made 100 or so atoms of it, and it would likely explode like a nuclear bomb, but we can't be too sure of that since we don't have any idea about its critical mass. But ignoring that, one kilogram would decay to literally one atom in just over a minute. For reference, that's about as fast as my competitive Overwatch profile. I don't think we're going to find a convenient meteor of it sitting around to power this gun. But there are some real world properties we can infer about it even if there hasn't been enough of it yet in one place to see with the naked eye. You know how I said only about 100 atoms of it have been made? Well, we can estimate the cost per atom of the stuff and compare this to something like gold to see just how expensive Moscovium will be to use, assuming that we could use it. The process for making Moscovium varies depending on the isotope, so let's just use MC288. The process for making it involves crashing calcium-48 at extremely high speed and energy into americium-243 in a particle accelerator, and just hoping that two of the atom's nuclei will fuse together to make Moscovium-288. Notice how 48 plus 243 equals 291. Well, three neutrons fly out in the process, totaling to a tasty 288 sandwich. If you're wondering where the 155 comes from, it's the number of protons in the nucleus, also known as the atomic number. Making Moscovium is very wasteful and expensive. Calculating the cost for the raw materials, facilities, and manpower, it costs just about 5 million to make one atom of it. Comparing this to gold, where one atom is worth about 1.684 times 10 to the negative 10 dollars, and we see this stuff is some of the most least cost effective material to use to power a gun. In fact, 
Just one kilogram of it, besides disappearing in less than a minute and likely exploding in a violent fireball, would cost 1.05 times 10 to the 28 dollars. Or this much. And considering there is about 60 trillion dollars total on Earth, nobody's ever going to have that kind of money to throw at something so useless, except maybe the US government. Besides cost, Moscovium has some more grounded properties. It's predicted to be a solid, with a melting point of 670 Kelvin, which is a little low, but not bad, and a density of 13.5 grams per centimeter cubed. Higher than lead, and just about the same as mercury. Mercury would actually be a more realistic weapon than this though. It's poisonous, you can drown in it, it's hypnotizing to look at, it doesn't have a breathable atmosphere. We can predict properties of elements based on its group. For example, every group one element, the alkali metals, hates going to SeaWorld. Oh, the humanity. Group 18, the noble gases, don't react to anything except for the ones that do. Moscovium is in group 15, so that means it has five valence electrons. Due to this, it could form quite stable compounds with double or triple bonds. This could be useful in the wonder weapon because it means we can make some uh, nice compounds and stuff with it. Other trends in group 15 are the main reason we know the properties I already mentioned. I'd say that's about all we need to know about the real element 115. It's quite possibly the worst material to use to power a gun, but in the zombies universe, the Apothecons must have done some Wingardium Leviosas on it because it seems to work wonders. The Thunder Gun, like its name implies, makes no sense. I guess I should mention that the Thunder Gun is available on the maps Keynoter Toten, Ascension, Revelations, and the Black Ops version of Nocturne Toten. And of course the mission numbers. Made by the Russians led by Gersh? Hmm, Russians. Moscovium. Interesting. Well, it was plagued by a small fuel cell capacity in short range. In game, it fires a large blast of compressed air to take out enemies. Let's just think about this. It fires air at a force strong enough to rip off limbs and take out up to a max of 42 zombies at once, which is the limit in a 4 player match. It could probably take out more than this since the wiki lists the damage as infinite, but in actual terms let's just limit it to 42 zombies max that can be blown away. The range on this was quite interesting to figure out, and after doing a bit of research, it really doesn't make sense how short of an effective range it has. After messing around with it in the campaign, I settled on a good representative distance for the maximum range the gun will affect targets. This is not the lethal zone, only the furthest distance the gun will cause enemies to trip over or whatever it ends up doing. I noticed this range was just about the same as the shotgun I was using, the Spaz-12. The absolute max range for the Spaz is 15.24 meters, as given by the COD wiki. So I put my hypothesis to the test. I took the size of the target that I stunned with the Thunder Gun and compared this to the size of another target at a range we know exactly, which is the max range the Spaz-12 would hit my test dummy. Yep, in Call of Duty, shotgun pellets just magically disappear into nothingness after a certain distance. I bet it's those pesky apothecons, huh? Since in split screen mode the center of the screen gets squished down by just over a quarter, we'll have to compensate for this by scaling it up 130% in the comparison. Now the two look almost the exact same size, considering I chose the closest multiplayer model I could find to the Thunder Gun test target, and the stances are just a little bit off from each other. Now we can say that the outermost range for the Thunder Gun is right around 15 to 15.5 meters. At this range, the air has enough energy that it can stun a person for a few seconds, or for those with weak constitutions, knock you to the ground. The lethal range for the gun, by my estimation, is just about half of that of the total range, which puts it at 7.5 meters, that is, just under the 3 shot kill range for the scorpion. I couldn't do as much of a scientific test for this range because whenever an enemy was that close to me, they were moving much too quickly for me to consistently line up shots to test which killed and which did not, so 7.5 meters will have to do. This is quite a short range, even for Call of Duty. Compared to real life air cannons like this one, which is supposedly the largest one ever made, it can knock over a wall of cardboard boxes 100 meters away. But even at close range, it doesn't seem to have nearly the power of the thunder gun which can rip off legs and throw people all over the place. And it's 3 meters wide, 4.3 meters long, and powered by 10 people, which the thunder gun doesn't have going for it. 
This thing just looks like it would hurt quite a lot. Not really do any serious damage. 747 airplanes are able to blast people over if they stand close enough. A stinking jet engine can only blow people over. We need something many times smaller that can kill people. So real weapons using air for ammo actually have quite far ranges, but just not much killing power. Interesting. In part two, we'll be calculating the force exerted by the Thunder Gun and all the other cool things we can figure out given that information. Trust me, you'll be astonished with what we learned about the magnificent and terrifying weapon called the Thunder Gun. Thanks for watching. It's just